Now, in December 2021, the United States of America announced sanctions on Bangladesh's Rapid Action Battalion, an elite paramilitary force for serious human rights violations. This action was over what the United States of America claimed were rampant extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances. This man that you see on your screen is Peter Haas, the American ambassador to Bangladesh in December 2022. He met the families of victims of alleged enforced disappearances in Dhaka's Shaheen Bagh. Among the people that Peter Haas met was BNP leader uh, Sajidul Islam Saman, who was a victim of enforced disappearance in 2013. Haas criticized the human rights situation in Bangladesh and urged Sheikh Hasina to act against the enforced disappearances. Now, Haas had to cut short his meeting with some of the families of the alleged victims of enforced disappearances because of pro-government protesters who tried to force their way into the meeting venue and surrounded his car. This was the start of a series of back and forth between Sheikh Hasina and the United States of America. In response to Peter Haas's criticism, Bangladesh established a human rights cell under the United Nations, increased diplomatic communication with the US and, com and complied with sanctions. But in February 2023, the US State Department Councillor Derek Charlotte voiced concerns over the decline of democracy in Bangladesh and warned that this would limit cooperation with the United States. In March 2023, Biden wished Sheikh Hasina on Bangladesh's Independence Day and in the letter he wrote, as Bangladesh approaches its next election, I am reminded of the deep value both of our nation's people place on democracy, equality, respect for human rights and free and fair elections. In response to this letter, Sheikh Hasina chastised the US for handling of its human rights and democracy. She raised a shooting in American schools and shopping malls. She accused Washington DC of conspiring against her government. It was in this response that Sheikh Hasina revealed that US was plotting to establish an airbase in Bangladesh and Myanmar, an allegation that was vehemently denied by the US Assistant Secretary of State, Donald Liu. She also accused the US of seeking a regime change in Bangladesh and attempting to eliminate democracy in the country. Now, after the Bangladesh elections concluded on 9th of January this year, the return of Sheikh Hasina to power for her fifth straight term, the United States said that the elections were not free and fair and also condemned the violence in Bangladesh. Now, months after winning the elections, Sheikh Hasina in May revealed that she was offered a hassle-free election if she, was allow if she allowed a foreign country to build an airbase inside Bangladesh. She did not name the country but claimed the offer came from a white man. Trouble mounted for Sheikh Hasina during her July visit in China. She met with Xi Jinping and signed 21 agreements, among which was an assistance of 1 billion yuan or 1,152 1, crore rupees. This was shorter than the earlier promised 5 billion loan assistance. The fact that Sheikh Hasina cut short her visit by, sight, by a day citing her daughter's ill health raised suspicion on the ties between the two nations. On 1st of August in 2024, the Bangladesh government officially banned jamaat e islami and its student wing Chhatra Shibir, designating them as terrorist organizations under Section 18.1 of the Anti-Terrorism Act of 2009. The role of the Islamist Chhatra Shibir, the student wing of the jamaat e islami can be seen clearly in this picture. The jamaat e islami has its presence in Pakistan and is said to be close to the ISI. The questions that arise now are simple. Are we convinced that this, in fact, was an organic people's revolution that uh, led to the coup and uh, destabilizing the Sheikh Hasina government? Can a movement of uh, such a huge proportionality have happened without American hand? Was Sheikh Hasina right when she claimed that there was, in fact, an attempt to overthrow a government? And it does jamaat e islami involvement in these concocted protests that turned violent then prove ISI's sinister role in the destabilization of Bangladesh and can China be involved due to Sheikh Hasina choosing India over Xi Jinping. Let's start off this conversation. I have with me Ambassador Veena Sikri and all these points are of great concern. Most importantly, the question of who was the orchestrator of this massive
protests that turned violent and led to the coup by military and removing the in uninstalling Sheikh Hasina from a prime ministership. Well, <clears throat> let's make it one point very clear that it wasn't the students. Because I think uh, that as far as the student uh, movement, the reform, quota reform movement is concerned, that movement had the support of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's government. And uh, she, in fact, is Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who in response to students' protests way back in 2018, had actually abolished the uh, quota for children of freedom fighters. For six years, from 2018 to 2024, there was no quota. In uh, June of this year, uh, somebody went in appeal to a high court and the high court reinstated the quota. But Sheikh Hasina's government went to the in appeal to the Supreme Court. And in that appeal, some of the students' groups, you know, the students' movement is a very amorphous movement with no single hierarchical leader, but a number of coordinators. So some of the coordinators' student groups went along with her to the Supreme Court. And on 21st of July, the Supreme Court gave its verdict. Uh, accepting that the uh, the quota will be restricted to just 5% for the children of freedom fighters and 2% for others. Yes. So that was, in fact, the end of the student reform movement. But in the meanwhile, because there was violence on 16th and 17th of July, and despite Sheikh Hasina's appeal to the nation and her promising a judicial inquiry into the students' deaths, the violence continued. But I must point out that even in this violence, uh, the Daily Star of Bangladesh has reported on Sunday that a total of 204 people died in the first week of the violence and of them 53 were students but the remaining were others they were like you know the police the law and order uh, the members of the political party the jamaat -e -Islam, the uh, islami chhatra sabir which is the uh, student wing of the jamaat -e islami and the bnp student wing and others so i think that it is these organizations which took over the movement and uh, created the movement to such an extent that even the army uh, at one point said that they would not fire on the students. But within the army, there is a very strong support for the jamaat -e islami So I think it is, in, in fact, if we see the events of the last two days, we see that there are com there's complete mayhem. There are no policemen anywhere. All police stations have been burnt. All police records have been destroyed. There's complete anarchy in yeah. Bangladesh for the last three days. And in the midst of this anarchy, there is no government, but there is there have been reappointments, new appointments for the post of uh, the uh, rapid, rapid action bilateral head, for the uh, police commissioner of Dhaka and so on. Who is doing this? There's no idea. There have been purges even within the army. The number two, three and four in the army hierarchy have been asked to step down from their posts. So I think the, the indication okay. that Mate Islami in control is a very strong one. And they have got support from where? Jamaat e Islami has regular contact with Pakistan for the last 15, uh, 50 years and more because they're the same organization. China treating Sheikh Hasina so badly, as you mentioned in your uh, account, uh, was certainly an indication that they no longer support Sheikh Hasina. And the appointment of Professor Mohammed Yunus as the uh, chief of the interim government would clearly show the American hand because they are the biggest supporter of uh, Professor Dr. Mohammed Yunus. And he's returning tomorrow, but there's a big gap in between of his returning and his announcement. And this has created, in the districts, Hindus are being burnt to death, being lynched to death, their property is being destroyed. Awami League people are being killed indiscriminately. Where are the human rights organizations like Amnesty and other than even the American government who had spoken uh, about uh, the Bangladesh earlier, but now they are completely silent? I think these questions have to be answered. Yeah. Professor Madhu Nalapat, talking about the, uh, uh, you know, the at this point of time hinted by Sheikh Hasina several times in the recent part past about the claim American plot to dislodge her government and uh, the kind of meddling interference that was shown by America right before the elections that were taking place in Bangladesh. One way or the other, uh, do you think America has been able to get its way in Bangladesh? Well, uh, I'd like to point out that no. Although there will be people in America who thought they've got their own way and uh, they, they are basically uh, f falling into a trap. They're falling into a trap laid by China, whether wittingly or unwittingly. The reality is that the jamaat -e islami and the BNP have today very strong links with China, far stronger than that 
of Sheikh Hasina. And as a consequence of that, and the influence of China, uh, plus all these human rights warriors in the United States that basically focus only on Sheikh Hasina and not on Khalid Zia, the reality is that Hindus have been at risk in Bangladesh for the last 10 years at least. There's no question about that. And several have had to shift, and many of them have paid with their lives for this. They're paying a very extreme price now, and that is because of uh, Jamaat Islami Bangladesh, which is different from Jamaat Islami of India. It's an extremely radical organization that, as you correctly pointed out, was made a terror group by Sheikh Hasina. Now, they are now on the rampage, and they're the ones who caused almost all the mayhem that you've seen, the violence, and the soldiers had to respond with, uh, with bullets, which is very unfortunate. But given the fact that there's violence everywhere, it is unfortunate. These were not students who caused the violence. These were not students who lynched Hindus and Awami League people. These are jamaat islami people. And frankly, they did the same thing in 1971, together with the Pakistan military. This time they're doing it alone, while the army is standing by, the police are standing by. But in 1971, they participated in the genocide of Pakistan, or, or, of Bangladesh, ordered by General Tikka Khan, uh, who supervised the whole operation. And this is what happened. So today they're doing exactly what they did. 50 years ago, mm. which is organized looting, rioting, violence, and lynching. And this time, again, they're doing it to innocent Bengali people and to innocent Hindus. That history, they have done it over the years. You cannot, they, the ban has not been effective, really. And frankly, Sheikh Hasina was not very strict about the ban because she wanted the support of the Islamists in some way, I guess. So as yeah. a consequence, they have grown, they have multiplied, and uh, today they are running riot. And if they are going to take a central role in Muhammad Yunus's administration, it's not going to last more than six months. Okay. There will be violence on the streets, and soon there will be a call for a new government, because these are hoodlums and hooligans, and they will never get support of the of a popular kind but they if they have seized control and they have they now basically have the dominant voice in the you know, government formally led by uh, professor yunus well i think bangladesh is in for some very difficult times unless you have moderate secular uh, people in the government people who reflected sheikh hasina's view but who are more efficient and effective than her in stamping out this kind of radicalism, you are not going to get any peace and tranquility in Bangladesh, Mega. Mm. Okay. Uh, Riaz Ahmed, how do you view uh, the alleged role of United States of America in dislodging the government? Uh, there have been a number of instances that have been highlighted by Sheikh Hasina in the past as well, in a recent statement talking about how there had been a proposal offered to Sheikh Hasina for a very easy win in Bangladesh in the last recently held election in exchange for an airbase be set up by this foreign country, by this white country as she mentioned. Uh, what are the gains that America uh, would seek for having a massive stake in how the government functions in Bangladesh? First of all, thank you for having me here. And um, I just was listening to the other co-participants' point of view. But before, actually, uh, Her Excellency, Her Excellency Binashri PG is here, who served in Bangladesh. We met several times in Dhaka yeah. some years back. Uh, she, she, she must have a fair amount of exposure and experience to typical Bangladeshi politics here. But before I say something about the role of India or America or China, 
let me make it one thing very clear and definitely this is my perspective you all of you can agree disagree anything i welcome that there is if we try to create a narrative like that as the anchor of this program you have been saying that is demeaning utterly demeaning for all these revolution members these students they were not I'm, alone on the I'm, street i'm not i'm i'm i'm, I'm merely stating facts uh, the okay. speculations okay. that are being raised That's your the of questions facts. are let also me, at this finish. point of time being asked of what is the role of jamaat e islami if there was if there was already a roll back that was done the protest the reason the protests were being held by the students and the roll back of the quotas that were being provided to the veterans mm -hmm. families in the government jobs if that, that that problem has there has been a resolution that has been had so what was uh, the demand and why was there a demand that sheikh hasina be uninstalled from her from her position as prime minister not just that oh, could okay, you listen, think do you listen, think a student listen, you protest to... could have turned so violent that there have been hundreds that have been killed there have been awami <laughs> league leaders 24 of them that have been killed in the last 24 hours is that is that normal by any by Me any stretch mega, of the imagination let let me say my let me give me some space here before you can have ample time to for a rebuttal let if you have the patience i can tell you my version of the fact okay so there was this students protest going on and as you rightly said it was about quota reform and problem is you are saying that when it has been settled by the court and government also accepting but when and before that in between july the 16th and july the 21st so many people were died and that was a huge force application that bangladesh has never witnessed before there was excessive force application and people were agitated like anything and if you tell us today this narrative nobody in bangladesh will subscribe to that it was done by jamaat it was the jam done by america it is utterly wrong because the the whole student movement have been joined by people from all strata of life in bangladesh and they joined the force because it is a manifestation of yes sir i i have seen you you are raising your hand but let me finish first so it is a manifestation of a pent up anger for too many years i mean there and was an and is that is that justified let, that let this storm this storm into sheikh hasina's residence finish. there was an they, there are people who are killed there are hindus that are lynched there are hindus that are lynched there are hindu temples that are destroyed and desecrated hindus homes properties businesses have been burnt down why is it no, that the hindus it, have been targeted now you are talking about the aftermath Let i am i am i'm talking about come. how the police and the armed forces and the military stood as a uh, silent spectators as there was death and destruction that was spread across the length and breadth of the country and it is not okay. the innocent okay. students innocent if, if students who, who could have line, who could have not have just, who could have orchestrated this thought, but a more sinister hand over here and that's sorry. exactly what i am probing sorry, over here that's exactly why the right questions at this time if you don't and allow me to complain it will be it will be it will be juvenile it will be it will be very naive for a person to think that a that students have come together and they have been able to dislodge the government killed so many people burnt down houses brought about a complete standstill so in the way people? bangladesh don't functions the, professor madan alapan professor madan balaver mr ahmed has a students completely diametrically wrong. opposite stance you are saying it is not wrong i don't think it is wrong student organizations motto was anti discrimination they said no discrimination therefore it is that is including as hindus Uh, uh, or awami league so it is impossible to believe that it is that same organization that is behind the violence no it was infiltrated and it was infiltrated by extremist elements 
Center of the Jamaati Islami, and they're the ones, and of course, elements of the BNP, and they're the ones who have caused the violence. The student protest was taken over by these elements, and they're the ones who have caused the, the, the violence, not yeah. ordinary students, whose motto was anti-discrimination. Thank well, you. So, so sorry to interrupt. I want to say, do, do I want to say the, one thing. No, no. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. I'll come to Riaz Ahmed. From where you are I'll come to. I'll come to Riaz Ahmed. Ambassador Veena Sikri, you want to make a point? Yes, I want to make a point. I, the investigation I, I, has I to be done Riyaz for They've known him. To determine they, who participated, no, who did the what wrong. I want to see. Let Ambassador. Let Ambassador. Uh, all of these Riyaz, I'll give you, I'll them. give you, I'll give you time. Ambassador Sikri, you want to make a point? Yes, I want to say okay, that. Okay, you I, give them time. Want, <coughs> you you I, never I, gave me time. Support. You interrupted I'll come to you. I'll come to you, sir. I'll that come to you. That was very unfortunate. No, I, I, I want to say that I entirely support uh, Professor Mahadur Nalpat in what he has said. And I think it cannot be the students of Bangladesh who are today killing the Hindus, who are today destroying the statues of uh, of uh, Sheikh Mujib, who are burning his home, who are destroying the infrastructure. They have attacked the Indian Cultural Center in Dhaka and destroyed it. Is it the students? No, they are the welcome participants in the Indian Cultural Center and all the programs. So I think uh, to try and use the students as a cover for what is happening today in Bangladesh, there is there there not a single policeman and they are being replaced by other people. What is happening is, is a clear takeover of the country uh, by one organization, which is the jamaat e islami So I think we have to be clear on what is happening. Yeah. I think we can go into the details of what happened at one point, yes. But if you're talking about students, and yes, they want no discrimination. And Sheikh Hasina had given that to them. So it is true that there was firing and there was even a judicial inquiry promised on that. But when the clashes between Chhatra League and Islami Chhatra Shabir and the BNP were happening, yeah. Nobody knows who was causing that. Yeah. I don't think that we can change a narrative now and say that, you know, this is all the students yeah. who are so thirsty and who are there. They are the ones who respect the liberation war. They know that their parents and grandparents took part in the liberation war and they respect that history of Bangladesh. So why is the statue of Sheikh Mujib being killed? And why is his yeah. home being burnt? And all the effort to wipe out the memory of the liberation war. Absolutely. Second liberation, Professor Mohammed Yunus is calling it a second liberation. Liberation from what? Liberation from the liberation war. So that means now we are back to the situation as to who had opposed the liberation war and who had supported the liberation war. Yeah. So I think second liberation is a very strange term that is being used by everybody now. So I think we have to be, be very careful on what we are saying and trying to uh, present a cover. Today, on another channel, somebody from uh, Bangladesh, a very eminent journalist again, was saying that, you know, um, if the students are so wonderful, they are running the entire transport uh, machinery, they are, they are manning all the police uh, stations. <laughs> uh, police, uh, yes. So I said, wonderful. Now you're saying the police, the students are taking over the police work also. Yeah. And maybe this is romanticizing the role of the students according to your definition of the Second Liberation War. Because the students may be manning some posts, some places in Dhaka, but uh, outside of Dhaka, what is happening in the countryside? I mean, can you hide that from the rest of the world? The same amnesty, the same uh, organizations, human rights organizations should come and see that. Yeah, I mean, you can't hide it from the rest of the world that is what is happening outside Dhaka. I've got first-hand accounts of people running for cover, their houses being destroyed. We saw today that the house of uh, uh, Mr. Rahul Anand in, in Dhaka, who is a famous singer, burned to the ground, targeted, targeted killing and destruction. We have seen photographs of lynchings of bodies yeah. of Hindus being upside down. This is targeted. Absolutely, Who is absolutely doing right. Who is doing it? This and, is the question and, and, to answer. Yes, I absolutely right, and that's that's exactly why you know uh, Riaz, when you make such statements and and building a narrative which is away from the truth is something that I, I have to raise and correct as well. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.